Hello, this is Deborah Cohen, a story and a song. And today's discussion is from the topic of my new book, Jewish Palestine, Arab Palestine, A History of Conflict. We're going to talk about the issue of the two-state solution. I thought I might explore that with you because I had a review for my book on Amazon, which thank you very much, but the gentleman who left the review said that my book doesn't contain the two-state solution, as if I wrote the book with the answer to the problem. But my book that I wrote is a basic outline of the Israeli-Palestinian conflict causes and it presents historically documented facts in this book. And then it's up to the reader to come up with a conclusion. Once you have all the facts, because we're in a world surrounded by propaganda lies, once you have the documented facts, then we can come to the table together, which is what we're doing here, and discuss a better two-state solution, because so far it's been a two-state delusion. We, we must get involved and educate ourselves on the situation at hand, because, you know, gone are the days when uh, Camelot was in politics, if you know what I'm talking about with the Kennedys, and we have to become more educated as members of our own country. We have to be aware of who our allies are, and we have to be aware of a communication with our own representatives, meaning Congress and Senate. And we don't want to uh, burn flags and spew venom and hate at each other because if you're in the United States, at least, it's. I think it still says one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. So if we are burdened with an issue in this world, which there's buku issues, right? We're here to make the world a better place. So spewing hatred, even though for some reason it's contagious, it's in the same vein of as gossip, which is rampant, it takes courage to pursue truth because it's not the majority. And so I'm just providing a platform and sharing my book with you to hopefully get you to think about this Israeli-Palestinian conflict, how it affects us all, and what we can do to make peace, you know? Not just talk about it, but do something about it. So if that interests you, then I invite you to spend the next 30-ish minutes with me to learn more about the historically documented facts of the origins of Palestine, and then take it with you and talk to your government officials with these facts, the ones that want to listen, and do something to help our ally... Israel. I'll be right back after this brief message. Hello, this is Deborah Cohen, Deborah Cohen Music, and I'm so glad that you took the time to listen to my podcast, A Story and a Song. It's about my life to share some wisdom and some mistakes, hopefully that we can learn from together and laugh at maybe, starting in the 80s in a new wave rock band in Boston with two singles that are still available on Spotify. Boston Nights and Dreamin'. And then on my worldly journey that we're all on, I morphed into a spiritually dominant being where I am a truth seeker and write songs of praise while having one foot in the world writing sync music. So listen up and share.
And again, this is Deborah Cohen. I thank you for joining. I see we already have a few people on Instagram. I'm also broadcasting live on my YouTube channel. The handle is Jewish Rock Music. Now, I know that there's some people that will want to spew venom, meaning they'll say hateful things, but you know, we need to help those people because hate is not the answer. We all know that, right? And uh, sometimes when we don't get our way, then we resort to juvenile behavior, tantrums, spa saying no, nasty things, throwing things, but that's not what this is about. If you've graduated from high school and you're listening to this, then you hopefully have learned the art of debate. Every high school student, at least when I was in high school, we used to have to learn how to discuss opposing viewpoints and then come to the table with our facts and try to reason together. And that's what we're trying to do here. So if you're hateful, then I suggest that maybe you read my book. It's called Jewish Palestine, Arab Palestine, A History of Conflict. And if you don't want to spend the money on it, well, then if you have a, a Kindle on Amazon, July 4th, I'm making the Kindle version a free download. So you don't even have to spend any money. Read it and then come back uh, next week. I broadcast Sundays at 11.30 a.m. Eastern Time on Instagram. My handle is Deborah Cohen Music, D-O-T-C-O-M. Or you can go to YouTube, as I mentioned, the handle, Jewish Rock music. So the book that I wrote, I wrote it shortly after the uh, beginning of the October 7th massacre. I never wrote a book before, but I had such a heavy burden for this situation for Israel that I I thought, you know what, I just can't leave it up to my, my politicians to do something. I have to do something. You have to do something. So you don't want to join the propaganda bandwagon because all that does is do disruptive things to the community that you're in. The media eats it up. You know, surely they're going to show it on the media and maybe that's what you really want is to get noticed. And if the only way you can get noticed is have a tantrum and burn flags and throw things at people, then, you know, what, what good is that? What are you going to do at the end of your road? Go to the White Thrones zone and say, yeah, I, I spewed all kinds of hatred to people and I wanted to you know, exterminate as many. No, 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 no. Okay, so let's talk about, first of all, who are the allies with the United States? I'm broadcasting with in the U.S., so I'm, I'm talking about U.S. is an ally with Israel. That's what we're talking about. So, in the list of allies with the United States, and what is the benefit of being an ally with the U.S.? Well, you have military protection. The United States has permission to have a military base in your country, which makes your country stronger, and vice versa. But we've got a problem with this war in Israel right now that was started by Hamas, the terrorist organization, that many American college students are right now are waving their flag, which is beyond me. So in the list of people, I think the United States has 27 allies. And I'm not an expert on this. I'm just sharing this with you because we can't sit on our hands anymore. We have to get the information, sift through the propaganda, and get to the truth. So I'm trying to make it easier for you to at least get a basic understanding of what this is all about, okay? Now, of course, there's a spiritual dimension, which I strongly believe in. The Bible, specifically the Torah, that says, God says, that he gave the land of Canaan, or in English it's Canaan, to the, the Israelites, the Jews. And the Jews have been here on record. I've explained this many times in the past. Uh, there is an Egyptian monument that's actually in the, uh, uh, let's see, Cairo M Museum that mentions the Jews in a monument. So, <laughs> you know, the Jews have been around for a long time, longer than we ever heard about the Palestinians. But 
you know, as a side note, B.B. Netanyahu mentioned earlier in his reign that the Palestinians actually come from Jordan, but that fact has been buried. Like right now, 60% of Jordan are Palestinians. And all of us should be scratching our head and say, well, why did, was there a group that broke off from their home country, Jordan? And by the way, the leader of the Palestinians, when they began their break off with Jordan, is Egyptian. Yes, sir, Arafat. So go figure that one out. So these this sect of Jordanians broke off from their country, Jordan, and decided to badger Israel and said that, you know, this land is our land and the rest is history, right? Well, you know, the thing is, there's countries that are saying to Israel, you know, you're guilty of humanitarian uh, disaster or situation in Gaza specifically, asking for a ceasefire. Well, let's just look at the countries because this is 2024 and we need to know if there are any people that are rebelling against Israel. Are they with uh, are they an ally of the United States? And there is one country. If you know what it is, put it in the chat. Which country is an ally of the United States that has declared uh, a separation from Israel? You, you can't do that. You, you cannot do that. But is the news talking about it? The media? Our politicians? Okay. So let's see in the list of countries... Who is rebelling against Israel that is an ally of the United States and Israel and the other 25 countries of NATO, N-A-T-O? Belize announced Tuesday that it was suspending diplomatic ties. Belize, number one, okay. Chile recalled its ambassador to Israel late last month citing unacceptable violations of humanitarian law. Okay, so Chile. Three, Colombia recalled its ambassador to Israel last month while condemning the civilian deaths in Gaza. Now, I'm not condoning the deaths in Gaza, but hello, what happens when you have a war? There are civilian deaths. If anybody's as old as I am and you remember Donald Rumsfeld, he called some civilians that died during a war what did he call that uh it slips my mind something <laughs> I'll, I'll i'll think up but you know it's a consequence of war nobody likes war but we keep having them okay another one that withdrew is honduras recalled this ambassador to israel in light of the grave humanitarian situation Bolivia last month that it was severing diplomatic ties with Israel. And uh, let's see, is that it? Uh, no, of course not. There's South Africa. South Africa. Yes, they're the ones that started it. Okay. And then, da 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 da, the answer to your question, if you didn't put it in the chat, is Turkey. They recalled its ambassador to Israel earlier this month. So, guess what? Turkey is an ally in NATO. Hello, how can you how can you withdraw your ambassador to Israel if you're an ally with Israel? Okay? Well, I guess you have the right to do that. But what is NATO doing about Turkey? That's that should be a big discussion right now. What is the United States doing? about their ally, Turkey, that is making noise against Israel. And actually, I've heard, and of course, you know, I don't want to contribute to propaganda, but I would look it up. Is Hamas hiding in Turkey? I know they're hiding in um, Beirut. There's weaponry in Beirut that Hamas and Hezbollah is using against Israel. Okay, so I'm talking about my book because we have to get the facts. If you didn't know that 60% of the country of Jordan is Palestinian, then that should be an eye, eye, what do you call it? Eyebrow razor. You know, 
is like, wait a minute, why is Jordan not helping their own people in Gaza and the West Bank? You know, Israel bent over backwards for these this tribe of Palestinians from Jordan that wanted their land. They call it their land in Canaan, but like I mentioned spiritually, God said, it's not your land, Palestine. You have your own land called Transjordan. So I talk about this in detail in my book. So write down my book name because you need to learn the facts. So that when you confront people with propaganda, you can say, um, excuse me, but, you know, there were secret documents that were discovered in the United Kingdom archives that reveal through lots of interviews, including interviews with the Palestinian police, that this is the truth about the origins of Palestine. The Palestinian people who are refugees were supposed to have the land of Transjordan, which would be to the east of Israel, looking at a map. But for some reason, and I tell you the reason in my book, I'm not going to give away everything in the book because then you won't get the book. And again, if you have Kindle, you can get a free book download from Amazon on July 4th only. I'm giving away this book as a Kindle for free. Okay, now another fact. Here's another fact for us. Refugees are supposed to be protected. Now we're talking about the Palestinian refugees. The UNHCR is a branch of the United Nations which helps to resettle refugees throughout the world. How do I know this? Well, in 1998, I contacted the UNHCR to relocate some Sudanese refugees that are still under persecution today, and I had them moved from a refugee camp in Sudan into my home. It was Julius uh, I'm not going to mention his last name, and four little kids and the wife, Medina. They came and lived with me in the United States in Cleveland, Tennessee for three months until they were able to establish themselves to live on their own. So I helped them to get off on their own feet. I helped them from war. The, the situation they were living in. So again, this branch, if you've never heard of it, is UNHCR. Now the interesting thing about this is in the United Nations, there's a second resettlement branch that was created specifically and only for the Palestinian refugees, which again, uh, their responsibility is to relocate the refugees in times of war. So I'm talking specifically about the Palestinians in Rafah in Gaza. The Palestinians have their own branch in the United Nations, which is called UNRWA, U N R W A, that only takes care of the Palestinians. No other refugee in the world has their own department of the UN that takes care of only them, only their people. So the question is that you should be asking, wait a minute, why didn't UNRWA relocate these Palestinians that broke off from Jordan and put them in an area of safety? Why didn't they do that? Are you scratching your head yet? Did you know that UNRWA is, was created to help only the Palestinians? And the defi definition of a refugee is a person that was born in another country and displaced because of war, famine, whatever. But the children of the refugees, in this case in Gaza, are not refugees. They're not 
legally refugees, but they're calling themselves refugees. And they want the pity of the world encroaching on Israel's land. And let's face it, I want you to put it in the chat right now if you would like to have people as neighbors that want to kill you. Okay? Because the world is fighting for the two-state solution, and they're insisting that Israel have neighbors in the two-state solution uh, for neighbors that believe that the only good Jew is a dead Jew. So if you would like to have these people as your neighbors, please write it in the chat and tell us what country you're from, and we'll look into that for you. Okay? Because it's not right. I don't know why the President of the United States or any politician thinks that we should fight for a two-state solution and make Israel have neighbors all around them that want to exterminate them. People are pushing for the two-state solution. And it may happen because, you know, this power in numbers... So, in, in my, this is, I mean, if this happens, people, those of you that are still listening to me, if Gaza gets their own statehood, then the first rocket that comes over that border into Israel should be an all-out war on Gaza from all nations, because you cannot insist that Israel have neighbors living beside them with your two-state delusion and then expect Israel to sit there and not fire back at Gaza when the neighbors start killing Israeli civilians. Ah, so let's see. And, and uh, Car Mariana comes from Barcelona. Thank you for listening. Uh, your screen is to Zoom. I'm not sure what you mean by that. So thank you for listening. And I don't know everything about politics because I just figured my government will take care of me. I'm an American. My government will take care of me. But I can't believe that our people are over here in the college campuses flying flags from a terrorist organization, Hamas. So it's time for us to wake up. We just can't let our politicians handle this mess. We have to have a voice. We're given the right to get involved. And so I'm just trying to state the facts. So, I yes, I am pushing my book, Jewish Palestine, Arab Palestine, A History of Conflict. It has the facts about Israel and why they're not to blame. Here's another nugget for you if you're still listening. And this will be my last one because, you know, it's overwhelming. A lot of people don't understand the Israeli-Palestinian war. And they blame Israel because it's only natural. If you don't know everything, well, it seems like it's Israel's fault. Well, don't forget who's, who's firing the rockets over the border between Gaza and Israel. It's Gaza. Gaza voted for Hamas to be their leadership. All right. Hamas and Gaza uh, during the annual Nova Music Festival, 3,000 people were there in Israel having this music festival. The festival is 3.3 kilometers from the border of Gaza and Israel. And these terrorists came over the border into Israel at this music festival and butchered, murdered, killed captives. There's still captives being held. And the politicians are forgetting to say things about these captives, including infants that are still being held captive. This is not acceptable behavior. And don't forget, okay, one, I, I said one more thing, but I've got to say one more thing. This is my really pet peeve right now. Maybe a month ago, President Joe Biden 
announced to the world that he was going to look into UN Resolution 1701. If you know what Resolution 1701 is, please write yes in the chat. Again, if you know what UN, United Nations Resolution 1701 is, please write yes in the chat. And I'm going to look and see who knows about UN Solution 1701. And again, it's in my book, which is why I want you to get the book and get the facts and then go to your governments and don't be hateful. Just state the facts. Okay, so here it is. Nobody has put yes in the chat. We've got quite a few listening on Instagram. We've got sleepy people on YouTube. Okay, but you can listen later. All right, here's the fact. UN Resolution says, number 1701, that they will push back Hezbollah to the Latani border, which is away from Israel, to create a safety zone between Lebanon and Israel. So, the thing is, they didn't, the UN is not doing their job. But who is getting blamed for the war? Israel. It's not Israel's fault they're defending the northern part of their border. They've had to, Israel has had to relocate 80,000 people, move them to the south of Israel because Hezbollah is attacking northern Israel. Why are they attacking northern Israel? Because they're terrorists. Why are they allowed to be so close to the northern Israel border? I just told you, if you're listening, because the UN failed to move Hezbollah back, push them back, push them north to the Latani River so they're further away from Israel's border to protect Israel's civilians. I mean, come on, people. What are I'd be asking, okay, who gets paid at the United Nations? I hope it's not my tax dollars. I don't know. Maybe some of you know this. I'd be asking, why isn't the UN doing their job? I'd be asking my politicians, why isn't UN Resolution 1701 being enforced by the United Nations? Israel is, is not the blame here. They're trying to protect their own people. Can you blame Israel for protecting its citizens? And unfortunately, when you have a democracy, which is another topic, I won't get into it, but too many fingers in the political pie. So they have all these meetings about trying to get the captives, but they're not doing anything. They need to get the captives back. Okay, if you're a Bible person, and especially a Christian, you must have heard the story about how Abraham heard his cousin Lot was held captive by these people in some, uh, let's see, what is it, so Sodom and Gomorrah? Well, what did Abraham do when he heard about his cousin Lot being held captive by a terrorist group? He didn't go and meet with a bunch of people to ask if it was okay. That's what you have to do in a democracy. Abraham instead rounded up as many people as, as he could and he went after his cousin to rescue him and killed a bunch of people in the process. Okay, I'm sorry, but that's what you get for captive, for taking hostages. No, but we can't do that today because we got all the other countries saying you're causing a humanitarian effort by protecting your own citizens. Hogwash. Get the book. Learn the facts. Go to your politicians and speak out. July 4th, Independence Day, you can get my book for a free Kindle download. The book is called Jewish Palestine, Arab Palestine, A History of Conflict. Use the power of freedom of speech in the country of the United States. Read the book. Share it with as many people as you can. And help your ally, Israel. 
sorry to be so passionate about it, but somebody's got to say something. All right. Let's exterminate those Hamas flags in our country and fight for justice. And with that, I'll say happy memorial. No, <laughs> not happy. Happy Independence Day. I always get those two mixed up. Happy Independence Day, July 4th, 2014. No, it's not 2014. It's 2024. I'm sorry. I'm getting all excited now and I'm mixing up my dyslex dyslexia numbers. Okay, get the book. Go to the website, DeborahCohenBooks.org, and may you have a splendiferous 4th of July, and may we hear that all the captives have been returned soon and very soon. Can I get an amen? Soon and very soon. Da, 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 da. Soon and very soon. We are the people of the human race Look at your brother now living in disgrace Do you give him a hand from where on earth you stand? We all have needs in this disunity People point fingers at their enemies Thinking of hurting one birth from the same seed People, 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 people Spotify Premium now has the new audiobook Jewish Palestine, Arab Palestine, A History of Conflict Simply search on Spotify for the book by its title once you click on that book, you have the option, of course, to read it. And then, after you're done reading, go to the three dots to give it a good rating. Once you click on the three dots, you will see Rate Audiobook. Click on that and then give the book a rating to boost it in the search. So everybody can find this new audiobook, Jewish Palestine, Arab Palestine, A History of Conflict, now on Spotify, also on DeborahCohenBooks.org. 